Hi there, James here at Radio Cup. In today's webinar, we're going to be discussing the most common problems we're receiving on support, questions from you guys, and also reasons that apps fail the review process. So there's a wide variety of topics we're going to cover. So let's get started. First, we're going to be discussing the most common problems we are seeing on support from you guys. The first issue is streams falling silent. Now, there's a variety of reasons. First reason is to do with track formats. Now, RadioCo supports MP3 or M4A file formats. Now, if you try and upload a file which is not one of them formats, RadioCo should alert you. However, sometimes, in rare instances, a file might get through. In that case, when Radio Code tries to play it, it will fall silent because it can't read the file. So always double check your files are MP3 or M4A file format. If you're not sure how to double check this, what I personally do, a little trick from me, is using a third party application such as VLC Media Player. You can actually find out media information through that application and it will tell you the file format. And again, while we're on file formats, another problem is the sample rate. So RadioCo only supports 44.1 kilohertz sample rate. Now, some tracks are 48 kilohertz. In cases like that, again, same reason with the track formats. RadioCo won't be able to read it. It'll fall silent. The second reason your stream is falling silent can be separation rules. So separation rules allows you to set a predefined amount of time, say like 100 minutes, between when albums can play and tracks can play back to back. So for example, let's say Queen. Everyone loves a bit of Queen, don't they? If I've got album separation, sorry, artist separation for Queen set to 100 minutes, if a track from Queen is playing now, it won't be able to play for another 100 minutes before another Queen track can play. Same with album separation, but obviously in just instead of being an artist, it would be an album. So double check to make sure your separation rules aren't actually stopping audio playing. And what I mean by that is if you have 10 tracks uploaded to Radio Co, whether you've got artist separation or album separation set to 100 minutes, physically there's not enough tracks to fill that space between the 100 minutes of other audio. In that case, Radio Co will just fall silent simply because there's nothing else to play. And it'll just wait for that 100 minutes to elapse before playing again. So obviously that can also cause the silence you're hearing on your station. So always double check. That is a big issue we do see on support. So it's always worth just making sure with that. If you're ever unsure, just disable separation rules. See if it fixes the issue. If it does, there's your problem. Try incrementing it slowly. So maybe starting at 10 minutes, then 20 minutes, and then start realizing when the issues are occurring. That's when you know you've gone too far. And lastly, obviously not always it is an issue on your side. It can also be a problem our side in rare cases. So do contact us at help at radio.co and we will be able to help you further should you be having issues with your stream falling silent. And it's nothing to do with separation rules or the file formats sample rate. Or shall I say slash sample rate, sorry. Another common issue we do see on support is the relay not working. So often this can be down to the relay format. Radio Co supports MP3 or AAC Plus. Radio Co streams, which are a version of MP3. Shoutcast or Icecast. If it's not one of them formats, it won't be supported. Best way to double check this is when you go to add a relay in Radio Co, click add relay. And then at the bottom, below where you've put the relay name, the relay URL, it'll say test connection. And what it'll do is it'll test to see if the relay is valid. So it'll be checking if the relay is reachable. So it's actually getting a response. And also it'll check if the format's correct. Now it will fail, like say the format is incorrect or it's not reachable, say the relay's not on air at the time or there's an issue with the link. Another reason why relays may fail is Radio Code does not support HTTPS, so SSL encrypted URLs. If you try to use an SSL encrypted URL, what RadioCo will do is it'll try to use a HTTP version of that URL. If that URL does not exist, for example, if it is only an SSL encrypted URL they provide, then RadioCo will not be able to play that relay. And lastly, just do make the both space it check. Is the relay actually online at that time? Take the URL, put it in a separate browser tab. Is it running currently? If it's not running currently, obviously that will be why the relay is not connecting as well. I'm going to be showing you how to use the FTP function to upload music to your radio.co station. Okay, so the first question you might ask is why would I use FTP rather than the drag and drop feature? And that is a very good question indeed. Now, the main reason is file sizes. With browser upload, which is the drag and drop feature, 
you're limited to up to 200 megabytes in size and that's for the file now if you're wanting to do longer files say like an hour long mix what you would need to use is FTP because instead of using the browser function you're actually uploading that file directly to your station server so it kind of allows you to sorry it does allow you I should say it does allow you to actually upload larger file sizes so to get started what you're going to need is FileZilla now that is an FTP client when you go to download FileZilla you'll see two options you'll see FileZilla client and FileZilla server what you want to select is FileZilla client and then what should come up once you've installed it is the following page now this is the application itself on the left hand side where it says users forward slash james forward slash downloads that is my personal computer on the right hand side that will be once we've connected the radio.co server so first thing you'll see at the top is the host sorry the host username and password now they're empty at the moment we need to get them details so what we're going to do is go over to radio.co select the add media button in the top right corner and then select FTP now you'll see the server username and password contained here I'll remember the server details, so I don't need to copy that, so I'll go straight away and copy the username. Okay, go back to FileZilla and type in amber.radio.co. For the username, just what I've copied there, I'll paste that in. And then same with the password, if you just hover over it, it'll actually bring up a copy button next to it, a copy link. Uh, and then it just makes it a bit easier for you to copy over. Let's paste that in there and then quick connect. That'll then connect me to the server via FTP and now you'll see on the right hand side the remote server which is your radio coast station and then obviously on the left side like I said earlier that is my computer so in this case what you do now is you'd navigate on the left hand side on your computer to find out where that file is you would like to upload mine's actually conveniently left in the downloads folder because I've only just downloaded it for this video so what I'll do is I'll select this file and then simply drag and drop on the remote server there now you'll see down here the percentage that says how long's left and how much of the file has been transferred and that file is now completely transferred over so if I go to the media section who will save me now shows right at the top and then just to show you that's completely transferred over fine if I click play See, that's now completely transferred over. The file plays fine. At this point, like you would do if you were just drag and drop, sorry, if you were uploading by the drag and drop feature, you can add this to playlists or simply if you're wanting to play it now, you can just click actions, add to queue. So a problem we've probably all seen one too many times, being unable to connect live to your station. Now, there's a whole variety of reasons this can happen. However, the most common reasons are as follows. Number one, your live DJ connection details being incorrect. If you sign into Radio Co, go to the live tab on the dashboard. Now that is on your dashboard, right at the top right hand corner, you'll see live, click it, it'll drop down a little bar, probably about that much, and you'll see your host, port and password information. Now what you need to do is ensure all three of them details are matching up with what's in your broadcaster. Another thing you should remember is the live DJ password changes for all users. So, for example, if I was a station owner, I would have a different password to a station manager and a different password to a DJ, for example. So make sure you're not sharing your credentials with another user when they're trying to connect live because it won't work. The second issue you do tend to come across is the live DJ event being scheduled for the wrong user. So make sure in the schedule you have actually scheduled it in for the right user who's trying to connect at that time. And that brings me on to the third major reason, which is an actual event hasn't been scheduled. So go into your schedule and make sure a live DJ event is scheduled. A lot of the time people think because live anytime is enabled, any user can connect at any time. That's incorrect. Live anytime can only be used for the station owner. So even if I've enabled live anytime and I'm the station owner, I can connect to live at any time. That's fine. My DJs, my station managers, my music controllers, they still need a live DJ event scheduled in the schedule. And the last major issue we do see on support, which I'll be discussing today, is live DJ connections dropping. So before I go into detail of why this is happening, it probably makes sense just for me to give you a quick brief run through of what's happening when you're connecting live. So I've got my laptop here. 
I'm connecting live via my broadcaster to Radio Coast. So I've got my laptop here and I'm broadcasting live using broadcast using this tool and it's going over here to the Radio Coast server. Now what's happening is the audio I'm speaking now, so I'm speaking into my mic which is going into my mix which is going into my computer which is being broadcast, all this audio is being packaged into data packets and them data packets are being sent to the server. So one of the most common problems we see with DJ connections dropping is simply you're using Wi-Fi over Ethernet. So as you can see, obviously I've got my laptop here. There's no Ethernet connection connected at the moment. I'll be using Wi-Fi. Now if I'm using Wi-Fi between the router and this computer, there's a lot of items, there's a lot of technology, there's a lot of like electromagnetic interference. In cases like that, data packets might not be all received by the router, and then it's obviously not being rebroadcast to the Radio Co server. Their class has dropped packets. Now, if we have enough drop packets, Radio Co won't receive a signal. In that case, Radio Co is going to think, right, I've got to be broadcasting something. I'm not getting any connection from my live DJ. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fall back to Radio Co Automation, your default playlist. And that's why sometimes when you're live, you can hear obviously Radio Co playing its default playlist, then falling back to or, uh, your live DJ, back to automation, back to DJ, and so on and so forth. Doesn't sound great, but the idea is that obviously we're trying to fill in the silence because as you well know, radio, you don't want silence. You always want something playing. So the best way to fix that is to simply connect an ethernet connection between your router and your computer. Because obviously we're using Wi-Fi, you're more susceptible, like I was saying before, with your other electromagnetic devices, etc., the electromagnetic frequencies, there's going to be interference between, and that's what's going to be uh, causing the data packets to drop. With Ethernet, obviously it's hardwired, there's no, there's very little. There is still interference, however, there's a lot less, and that means it's a lot more stable a connection. So once you've done that, the next thing you want to check, if there is still dropouts occurring, is try restarting your router. Sometimes it is as simple as a quick reboot, like anything with IT, and just giving things a restart, nine times out of ten fixes the issue. And the last thing really is contacting your internet service provider. Explain you're having a lot of dropped uh, packets and see what they can do to assist you with that. Um, a word of warning as well, I don't tend to recommend using public networks just for the same reason of using Wi-Fi. Obviously, it can be a lot of devices on there. They're not the greatest. And for stability, you're much better using either a home network or obviously like we're in today, like an office network. So thank you very much for listening to me go on there about the most common questions we receive on support. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk to you about the most common reasons we reject the app submissions you send through to us. Now, hopefully this is just going to help you understand what we're looking for or what Apple and Google are looking for and obviously help you ensure that we can get your app live as soon as possible without any headaches. So the first and by far the most common issue we do receive is your privacy policy. Now, I will probably say I reject at least 80% of apps just because of your privacy policy. It's that common an issue. And simply what you need to understand is Apple and Google both require before uploading apps to their store, you have a valid privacy policy in place. Uh, a valid privacy policy in place. That is a tongue twister. Um, now, obviously, the privacy policy itself, all that includes is basically what information you're taking from the user downloading the app or someone listening to your stream. For example, a privacy policy uh, for my station would say, as you, with the listener, what information we're getting from your device, how we're storing your information, and any other clauses like uh, your deletion, retention policy, etc. Now, with Radio Co, we've actually made it quite easy for you because I do understand. Obviously, a privacy policy can be quite bewildering and uh, concerning uh, thought prospects for people who haven't actually dealt with privacy policies before. So in the description below, you'll see a guide for the app privacy policy and how to create one. Okay, what I do is recommend having a read through there. We've made it quite simple. We've actually included clauses you can just copy and paste into your uh, privacy policy. So there's no guessing. Copy and paste it in and then submit it through. We'll accept it. Brilliant. Jobs are good. The second thing is your Apple developer credentials. Now, Google and Apple both require you to have an active developer account with which is enrolled on the developer program. Now, Apple developer program is for the iOS apps. Google developer program is for your Android apps. Now, we're only kind of focusing on the Apple apps at the moment just because obviously we, with the iOS apps, what happens is we actually submit them for you. With the Google apps, we send the build to you. You then upload it to the Google Play Store. 
Now with your developer credentials, you need to make sure you're not actually using the radio co ones. A lot of the time people log submit their radio co login details, getting mistaken for the developer account details, and that'll just get the app rejected. So what you want to do for the developer account details is head to developer.apple.com, go to that on a browser, click accounts in the top right corner, and then you'll be greeted with a login page. Now here, we just need the login details, the email and password for this account. If you haven't yet got one, again, in the description of this video, we'll have a guide which will include information on how to create a developer account and also how to enroll on the Apple Developer Program. I must confirm again, you need to be enrolled on the Apple Developer Program. Don't just create an Apple Developer account and be done with it. You still need to enroll. It's $99 per year for the Apple Developer account. For the Google Developer account, which you also need, it's $25 one-off fee. Make sure you're enrolled. If you're not enrolled, we can't develop the app for you. And lastly, licensing. Now, licensing is a requirement Google and Apple have requested for quite a long time. They need evidence of this. Unfortunately, we can't take your word for it. We do need solid evidence because we need to supply that to Apple and Google. So if you can contact your licensing body and either get a licensing certificate or a licensing contract and send that over, PDF format is preferable. That should be sufficient for us to submit to them. Now, if you're not sure on licensing or you haven't got licensing in place, again, in the description, we'll have a guide and that'll tell you all you need to know about licensing as well as the licensing bodies in your local regions. And that's mainly the issues we come across with apps. A lot of the time, obviously, it is just your privacy policy, your developer credentials or licensing. I'd say that's 99% of them. If you make sure they're all correct, you should have no problems in progressing through to the development stage. And now, just before we get onto the questions by you guys, thank you very much for them. What we're going to do is we're going to talk about how to get in contact with Radio Co. So a lot of the time we do get questions saying, how can I contact you if I have an issue? Now, the best way to contact us is via the chat widget in your dashboard. So if you go in your dashboard on Radio Co, in the bottom right hand corner, be a lovely uh, red button with like a little uh, chat icon. Click that, you can send us a message. If you don't have that come up, head to help at Radio Co. You can email us there. And what we'll do is we'll be able to get back to you as soon as possible. If there's any planned maintenance, we'll email you or leave you a note in the dashboard. However, also do keep an eye at status.radio.co on a web browser. And this will tell you about any issues we're experiencing at the moment, as well as any planned maintenance in the future. And finally, what we've done recently is we've created a new document on our help center. If you head to account and billing management, account, and then known issues, you will see a help guide in there which will tell you all the current issues we're dealing with. And we'll be providing updates in a timely manner there so we can keep you updated as much as possible and saves you having to contact support regarding that. So it saves you a bit of time. To yeah, so we're going to just be, me and my colleague Reese are just going to be addressing your questions. Uh, I think we've got about 10, have we? Yeah, yeah about we've got that. 10 in total. Yeah, so. great. So we've just picked 10 of the questions we've been sent it over. We'll go through each one, provide the answer. And obviously, if you've got any other questions, then fire them over to help at Radio Co. And we'll uh, do our best to help. So, let's get started. Shall I go first? Yeah, go right. ahead. So, first question is from Tibby, and it's tricks for 100% uptime. Now, obviously, with cloud-based solutions, there is no the, there's no true 100% uptime, whether it's anything, any cloud-based solution, any solution in general, really. You can't guarantee 100% uptime just because there's a lot of variables at play, network connection, server issues, etc. However, what I'm going to address is I'm going to kind of, I'm sorry, however, what I'll do is I'll try and tell you the best way to maximize your uptime. So number one, a lot of the time you're going to have issues with your uh, uptime is when you're broadcasting live. So if you're broadcasting live, obviously you're having connection issues, it's going to keep dropping. That's obviously going to affect your uptime and obviously not going to sound too good for your listeners when it's dropping between your playlist, live, playlist live and so on. So, so as we were discussing earlier, it's making sure your connection is right, so make sure you're using Ethernet rather than Wi-Fi, not using public networks, uh, making sure obviously you stream at a lower bit rate if you are having a lot of issues to try restarting your routes and so on. Um, obviously, another the another issue we kind of talk about is separation rules. Uh, it's, it's kind of just covering what I was saying earlier, really. So it's like um, your separation rules, it causes your station to fall silent if you're, there's not enough tracks in your library to kind of uh, follow the separation rules. Obviously, it'll fall silent until the uh, period has elapsed and then it'll continue playing. So make sure your separation rules are fine and have tracks in your default playlist. So worst case, if you are live and the connection drops, it's got something to play, it's not gonna be silent. A lot of people, especially if they're broadcasting live all the time, they don't use automation, they leave their media library empty. 
great in ha it's great when you think about it because obviously you're not going to really need it however if you're having network issues it falls back to automation if it's silent what's it going to play nothing so you're just going to have dead air again that's going to be affecting your uptime it's not going to give a great impression to your listeners now just to put your mind at rest obviously because i mentioned you can't guarantee 100 percent uptime obviously with cloud-based solutions they are a lot more reliable and you have a you tend to have a lot higher uh sorry with cloud-based solutions like radioco you do tend to have a, a higher percentage uptime than you would having something locally installed like on my computer for example uh, a solution on my computer simply because obviously you've got a single point of failure if my computer died a computer turned off there's a power issue anything like that that's off i'm offline whereas with cloud-based solutions we actually have redundancy in place so for example if one of our servers went down we'd have another server pick up if we had a station server issue and there was like a hardware failure we could then swap out to another server etc so we always have something in place thank you Tibby, for that question i'm now going to pass you over to reese who'll address the next question we got and i'll just uh, move that boom arm out your face yeah there we go there we go so the question that i have got in here is how to get advertisers on board so going into that i would focus on your project first to be honest um make sure that is all up and running okay and when you do get to a level where you've got a strong enough brand um then i would focus on advertisements and personally i would go for advertisements where they fit the brand um of your station so because that will be a lot easier to get them on board because there has to be a return in investment for the advertiser um, so i'd look locally at first and not really go for big brands as i think you'll have more success there um with people that fit the needs of your station yeah and you'll work better um as a team as well if you both have the same goals and visions um in sight so yeah that is the answer to your question and now I will pass back to James, who will go with another question. So thanks, Larry. Uh, so next question we've got is from Darnell, and the question is: What is the setup cost slash requirements, and how long does it take to get started? Cost-wise, we have different plans, so obviously suit different budgets and different needs. We start at the light plan that is thirty-five dollars a month, and it goes all the way up to the uh, pro plan, which is one hundred and forty-nine dollars a month. Now, don't worry too much about the $149 plans or even the gold plan to start with. A lot of people, what they tend to do is they choose the bronze plan. You can go light if you're just wanting very basic broadcasting. My personal opinion, bronze offers the best kind of range because you get most of the features you get on the higher plans, a bit less bandwidth and stuff. However, obviously, you get most of the major features like your track editor, uh, voice tracking, etc. Regarding what kind of infrastructure you need, the beauty of Radio Co, like I just mentioned earlier on when I was speaking to Tibby, is uh, the uh, with Radio Co, it's obviously all cloud based, so you haven't got anything actually installed locally on your computer. Beauty of that is we call these a dummy terminal. So this is basically like you're just sending commands to a server. So any clicks you make on it, any, anything you do on your station, it's not actually happening on your computer. It's not using your processing power. It's all going to a server. The server's doing all the work for you. Beauty of that, you don't need a fancy computer. I mean, we've got Macs here. You don't need anything like that. You can set off, as long as your computer is not from the Middle Ages and it's not running on 512 megabytes of RAM, um, you'll be completely fine, okay? Um, regarding, the only kind of requirements I'd say is make sure it's a Windows or a Mac computer. Like I say, you don't need Mac. If you want to use Mac, there's no problem. We use Mac. But obviously, if you want to use Windows, that's completely fine as well. Just don't use anything like a Chromebook because you can't install broadcasters on there if you want to at a later date to go live. Um, now, regarding uh, like peripheral software, sorry, peripheral items such as a mixer we've got here and a fancy microphone, this nice lovely Shaw, I might add, um, you don't need any of that when you're getting started. All you need is a computer. You can actually get USB mics now as well. So if I'm going, if you're wanting to go live, you can get for a couple of dollars a USB microphone. It connects directly to your computer, and you can broadcast live. Obviously, it won't be great audio quality like you're getting from something like this. But obviously, you're looking a couple hundred quid here easy. So obviously, it just depends on your budget and how far you want to go. What I'd personally recommend there, Darnell, is to get your legs under the table. Just start off with a USB mic. Like I say, twenty-five dollars or something. You can pick yourself a decent one, like for fine. Um, and obviously that'll just give you the broadcasting uh, experience, get yourself going live on that, understand how it all works. Then at a later date, if you want to upgrade to something like this, obviously you've got your mixers, I think these are like five, 600 quid easy. Um, again, your microphones, you're pushing this uh, north of a thousand there. So obviously if you're wanting to progress at a later date, that's something you can look at, but to start with, 
definitely don't even think about anything like this. Just think USB microphone, best case, and uh, a computer to go live. And that's literally it. And that's all you need with a cloud-based solution. So obviously all now you wanna do, Darnell, is get started. To do so, head to radioco forward slash pricing, and that'll allow you to start your own trial and choose which plan you'd like to try out there. Of course, if you have any questions, do let us know. You get a seven day trial to start with. We can extend that to 14 days if you wish for a bit more time. So, you know, just ask. We're more than happy to do that for you. And uh, I'll just pass you on now to Reese, who's got the next question for us. Yeah. Thank you, James. So my question that I've got in is what should I be careful of when creating a radio jingle? So with radio jingles, you want them to be short and catchy um, and only have essential details in really. Uh, because these are what's going to be looping um, through in between tracks playing out or live DJs being connected. So you don't want it to, in essence, you don't want it to be too annoying um, so people get sick of it. But you do want it to contain information like your station name maybe, the frequency um, if it applies. Um, also, maybe even a tagline. Um, but a very catchy tagline that people can maybe even catch on to and people will remember your station because of the tagline. Uh, so things like that um, would be what you would want to include with a radio jingle. But yeah, other than that, it is a very simple uh, audio clip. So other than making it catchy and including the information like station name and tagline, that's all you should need, so yeah. So uh, we've got a question now, my final question, sorry, is from Janetta, and the question is, could I record an audio clip from YouTube and upload it to Radio Co for rebroadcast at a later date? No, that's your answer. Uh, basically, you're not allowed to through YouTube, unfortunately, Janetta. Now, YouTube actually put in their terms and conditions that you are not allowed to rebroadcast their content. If you do that, you will get in trouble with them, so, Honestly, it's not worth the risk, don't try it. However, what I will say is if you decide to, say, record via a third party service, which we're not gonna disclose any information about, um, if you decide to take a recording from a third party service and you decide, obviously, as long as you've got all the uh, relevant rights, of course, uh, to upload it to Radioco, the best way to do it is actually treat it as a normal track. So you've got this MP3 recording or M4A recording on your computer. What you wanna do is either, as I was showing before, when I was speaking to Marco about his question with FTP, you wanna either follow that and upload it via the FTP method, or if it's under 200 megabytes in size, you can also use the browser drag and drop feature, which is literally just on your dashboard, grab the file, drop it on your dashboard, it'll do the upload for you, smash it. Now, once that's uploaded, it will just be contained within the tracks section, okay? Then you can obviously schedule that into a playlist, so add it to a playlist, and then you can schedule it into the schedule when you want it to broadcast, or obviously just leave it in the playlist for now, or the media section for now, and obviously you can just reuse it at a later time when you want. Or alternatively, if you want it to play right here, right now, what you just need to do is go to the track section, click actions next to the track, and then, oh, wait, it's three dots, and then click add to queue. That'll actually add it to the queue and it should play after the current track or after your queue's emptied if you've added multiple tracks in there. I can't get my station to go live using Virtual <coughs> DJ. I tried different settings and nothing seems to have worked. Well, with a situation like that, um, I would, first of all, the first priority would be to check that you're putting the right um, details in from the live DJ drop down. Uh, and you'll see those details, the host name, the port, and the password in the top right hand corner. Um, so always check that you're putting the right details in. Um, and then how you would usually connect, there is a guide on this, but how you would usually connect on Virtual DJ on the latest version that I have installed on my Mac is you would go into Virtual DJ, go to the top right hand corner to the settings cog, um, where you would then head to broadcast on the side menu and select radio server and in there you would keep everything the same um, except you would put in the details from your dashboard in the live DJ drop down and head back to the main page of virtual DJ where you've got the two decks at the top for you and hit play on one of the tracks and that should be connected for you but we do have a detailed guide on this uh, which is at help.radioco um, um, so if you'd like to head to there for more detail then that would be great so moving on to the final question now of the webinar it will be how do we attract a larger audience well that is a very um, broad question we've had in there um, because 
you can do that in many ways um so first of all i would like to list off just the things that we offer uh so the add-ons like um buying the alexa skill add-on with our sales the app add-ons um the old app add-ons uh, and obviously we've got the new apps coming very soon so the add-ons that we offer will help with that um which will get it on multiple platforms for you um where people can access the website add-on as well um which people can access it from multiple avenues and then moving on to you could even get it so with a local station you could go locally um, and get it in local groups facebook groups are great um, for just getting things out there and getting people in your local area knowing about things which i'm sure you'll know about uh, so getting into them and invited into them and putting your streaming link there uh, that will help you a lot uh, and the last thing i'll say um kind of relating to what i said uh, just before this is if your station is a very niche focus then i wouldn't go too broad uh, with the target target audience that you're actually going for um, and getting listeners in from different areas. Um, and for that, I would just stay locally, uh, stay within your niche uh, and your station will just naturally grow um, in time. And everything is about patience and time. So yeah, I would just patiently wait and your station will get there in the end. Um, and we do actually have a blog on this, um, which will be linked in the video. So if you want more detail on that, then yeah, you'll be able to see that here. So thank you very much for your time. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed it as much as me and Reese have enjoyed uh, presenting this for you. If you've got any ideas for the next webinar, any kind of topics you'd like to cover, do let us know at helpatradio.co. We're hoping to kind of keep this going on a, a monthly or maybe every two months basis. Yeah. Um, and yeah, thank you again. Thank you very much for all your time. It's been, like I said, I've really enjoyed it. I hope it's all been beneficial to you, what we've talked about today. And if you have any other questions which haven't been covered here or you're experiencing any issues, don't hesitate to contact the support team at helpatradio.co or alternatively via the uh, red chat box on your uh, radio code dashboard. Okay, and until next time, thank you very much for joining us and take care. Happy broadcasting. And just before you go, how would you like to launch your very own online radio station? Surprisingly, it's a lot easier than you may think. And the absolute best way to get started is by chatting to myself or another member of the Radio.co team. Just head to radio.co forward slash book a demo to schedule a video call with us where we'll discuss your plans, answer your questions, and of course, guide you around the software. Or click on the link here to take your first step into launching your very own 24-7 global radio station.